Okay, so I remember kind of starting as an intern, everything was really new, the transition from being a med student to being a physician, nothing really could prepare you for that. As much as they say that medical school does prepare you in a way, everything's new. And so the goal of the boot camp is to, number one, I'm really a huge advocate in kind of having these mental frameworks to help you throughout life uh, when it comes to obstacles, which you will face in residency and in, in other areas in outside of medicine. Having a, a, a really solid framework in, in which you can work on and be able to kind of adapt to whatever life throws at you, I think is essential. So that's kind of the things that I'll give you, kind of my own philosophy on that. And that's the majority of the talk today. And then I obviously will want to make sure that you get some value. And I'm going to talk about presentations, what I do. And I also want to open this up for discussions. Um, if you guys have any specific questions at the end, we'll be able to talk. Um, so kind of with that being said, my name is Ever. I'm in California. I'm actually in, in the North uh, Bay Area. Uh, like I said, I mentioned, I'm, I finished, I'm finishing on my first year in pulmonary care medicine. and I want to go back. I want to actually want to train or finish my training and then go back to Orange County. That's where I'm from. And the big thing for me as an intern, burnout was such a big factor in me kind of realizing that medicine wasn't ideal for a lot of people. You know, there's a lot of, especially with, with where I come from, no one in my family was a physician. So I didn't really have any support outside of my friends. And a lot of them had their own problems to, to deal with. So a lot of the burnout really dealing with that burnout really came down to me trying to find the right resources. And especially with, you'll see as a resident, you're working so many hours that it's really hard to see a therapist, really hard to see someone to talk about these things, to talk about mental health and um, someone is that, right there, so Joe Kennedy's coming in, uh, to talk about mental health. And that's the majority of uh, the reasons why a lot of people decide to leave medicine is because the, the burnout rate is really increased, really high. So coming from a medical student to an intern, the responsibility is, is different, right? So as a medical student, a lot of it was just making sure you're able to present somewhat okay. And then as a physician now, a lot of it is putting in orders, following instructions, and learning from your senior uh, seniors, which are second years or third years. And then also making sure you're able to present well enough so that your attending is able to trust that you're understanding the full critical condition of the patient. Um, so the first part of today is, um, and I'm gonna re reference my outline because I kind of want to, I also want to, don't want to uh, ramble on. So the first discussion today will be um, kind of introduction of the course, what you will learn and what you should expect out of yourself. Um, so the course is to prepare you for intern year. So if you follow the course that I'll outline, uh, it's gonna be like a, at least five more sessions until I, it's a full course. I'm gonna walk you through what you need to do, the mindset of a, a good clinical physician, regardless of the experience that you have. Uh, I think these are you know, mental shifts that you could work on regardless of how much patient experience you have. I think it's gonna serve you well. So giving you the, those tools. And then also what, should you, what you should expect as an intern. So that's the discussion that I'll have today. And I'm also gonna walk you through transition from being a medical student to a physician kind of what imposter syndrome is. Maybe you guys don't feel like imposters now, but trust me, once you become physicians and the first order you have to put in, you're going to feel like an imposter multiple times throughout that year as an intern and definitely even later on in training. So kind of equip you to kind of face those obstacles when you have them. And also having a, a growth mindset, I think is really important. Uh, understanding that we're all human, we're all going to make mistakes. And the most important thing is how do you make sure that those mistakes that you're making now are able to equip you to, for the future, are able to make you actually be productive in these uh, failures, essentially. Uh, and then the last thing would be, how do you manage your, uh, if, you know, your study time? You know, you guys as med, med students, you feel like you don't have much time, which is true. You know, most of the time you're basically studying, but you actually have a lot of time to study. And now as a physician, as a physician you're gonna have even less time to study. Uh, you're gonna feel really tired, you're gonna come home. And all you're going to want to do is rest. So I'm going to talk to you guys about how I navigate through that. Um, and then also, what are the intern task managements? How do you become a really good, efficient uh, intern? Um, and those are the mental shifts that, or the things that we could discuss as well. And then 
lastly is kind of understanding how to com how to communicate medical information uh, presentations, basically. Um, so this is really a discussion that I, I don't want to make this super formal. I want to basically make it so that you guys, if you guys have questions, comment, whatever. We we I want this to be a Socratic seminar in a way, and I don't want I definitely don't want this to be a lecture. Um, so if you guys have any questions, you guys have your mics, feel free to um, talk. Um, definitely, if it's too loud, I'll let you guys know, but feel free. So with that being said, um, kind of like I mentioned, the course is going to walk you through uh, general st stuff. And then as you get on more, the more advanced courses, I'm going to walk you through how to form a differential. How do you form a really solid assessment and plan? How do you think uh, like an ICU physician uh, when it comes to a critical care patient? How do you assess critically care, uh, critically ill patients? How do how do you respond to rapid uh, you know rapid responses? How do you manage codes? Uh, that's going to be throughout, uh, and this is definitely not an ex extensive kind of discussion on those topics. It's just mostly to give you the framework and have an idea of oh wow okay I didn't know you had to do this or that's how you approach it okay so that when you're walking in intern year you're not completely lost. And actually, if you, I guarantee you that if you do the course, even if you're able to participate in some of them, you're still, you'll still be ahead of the curve because a lot of the interns are expected to not, not, not know anything. Uh, but it was my experience that if I had this level of like mentorship and discussions, I wouldn't have felt like an imposter. I would have not, I would not have felt as insecure as I did as an intern. Um, so, with that being said, let's just start from the beginning. Uh, transition from medical student to physician. You know, that's a really hard transition. And I have to be honest with you, everybody has their own experience. Some of you guys, you know, maybe had families who were physicians, are physicians. So you already have an experience of what it means to be a physician, what it takes to be a physician. Others might be their first experience becoming uh, college students, be going into the medical field. Um, so the experience is vastly different. So I think this comes down to really understanding one another and really being compassionate to your colleagues. And sometimes if you identify someone who's struggling, you know, reach out to them and try to understand how you could help and vice versa. Um, but the other, regardless of where your experiences lie, I think it's a challenging uh, avenue. You know, it's a challenging journey that you're going to undertake. Becoming a physician is a huge privilege and it is a huge responsibility. But I think you guys, anybody, you guys are well equipped to do it. Um, I think number one, just gonna say it from the beginning, there's a reason why you guys matched. And I think sometimes the imposter syndrome, you know, there's a, we're type, we're, most of us are type A personalities. Most of us got here because we hold ourselves to really high standards. But at the same time, that I've noticed that that could be detrimental to your own growth because sometimes we're too hard on ourselves. And this is a time where this is not beneficial for you. Uh, I want you to tell yourself, you know, I'm really proud of myself for getting to this level of, of my journey in which I'm a physician now. And just be proud of it. Embrace it. Enjoy it. Meditate on it. I'm a big advocate in reflection. I'm a big advocate in that one must really reflect on their journey to continue moving forward. Because if not, we're just we're just running around, we're just running in circles, we're hamster in a wheel and in a cog and moving along and we're gonna die and not really enjoy life. So that's number one takeaway is really enjoy life when it comes and enjoy the now because before you know it, you'll be done with your training and, and you'll go on to other things. But if you don't enjoy the now, you won't enjoy the future either. So that's number one is uh, appreciate where you come from. Number two is recognize that you're not perfect. Recognize that, yeah, you're a physician, but guess what? You're so new. You are you have limited experience. And as much as you like to think that you have some experience as a medical student, it's really not much. Um, and it's interesting. Like, I used to think, you know, medical, medical school was, I learned a lot and I felt like I grew a lot. Think of, like, residency. It's going to be even, like, 10 times more fun. Um, more enjoyable, like the people that you know in medical school who are your best friends, you're going to meet really cool people in residency and you're going to grow together. So enjoy that journey as well and embrace the uh, obstacles that come along. Um, you're going to have hard times, that's part of residency. Um, and so the other part is that 
when you do have hard times, it's so easy for us to say, um, you know, um, we are, you're gonna, there's going to be times where you're presenting a patient and you're attending, walk, you know, talks to you, be like, hey, you did a really bad job, or I didn't like the way you said this, or your senior resident was, everybody has different personalities. Medicine has different people, um, people who are nice, people who are just not nice and can be really mean to you. Try to understand that that's not personal. Try to understand that everybody is different and just try to be, take feedback for what it is, which is sometimes it could be helpful. Other times it might not be true. Try to really remain um, subjective, uh, objective, I should say, and really look at the data points and say, hey, am I really not that good? Is it, beca is it because based on one person or is it because multiple people are telling me? And that in itself should maybe tell you that you should seek support in other areas to get you to the level where you need to be. And that's okay. And it's not a reflection of who you are. It's not a reflection of you shouldn't put labels on yourself either. And that's what I've learned as well. Um, and then the other component that I also wanted to talk about is how can you use failure to improve? Um, I'm sure, I mean, I don't have to say this, but I will. How many of you guys have failed? I'm pretty sure everybody here has failed one way or another. Some of them might, might have been really bad failures and others might not have been so much. But regardless, everybody has their own failure and they all look at the failure the same. You know, they question themselves, they question their abilities, they question their, you know, their goal. And so you need to just remain optimistic. And something that I've learned throughout residency and even fellowship is that you're always going to make mistakes, no matter what, no matter how many, how much experience you have. Attendings make mistakes. Attendings don't know everything. So understand that you coming in, actually, I want you to make mistakes. Embrace mistakes because through mistakes, you're able to get better. Um, and that's the part where a year from now, the more mistakes you have, you made, the more you'll know, obviously, all within reason and making sure that patients are taken care of. Um, but that's why the residents, senior residents are there to make sure that that no, no one is being harmed. Um, and then the, uh, so I'll stop here because I, I want to ask if you guys have any questions. If not, I'll continue to the next agenda. Okay, so, um, Feel free to uh, uh, text or message uh, on the on the chat here. The other the other uh, agenda was mastering healthy habits and residency slash time management. Um, so I think it's important to have a well balanced schedule. I think the most important thing. I know you guys wanted to come here and just talk about medicine right from the beginning, but it's my belief that having a very this is gonna this is actually even more powerful. Having a very good study uh, schedule outside of medicine is gonna prepare you to like be focused. Make sure you have enough energy, enough sleep to be able to be productive at your work and also have some conserved energy to come home and study. It is my belief that you need to have adequate sleep. Um, and obviously, it's going to be difficult sometimes. You know, I have a kid now. I have, I'm a dad. I just became a dad about a month ago. And sleep has been really hard. Um, so if you're a parent, I totally understand. It's going to be difficult. So you got to talk to your, your loved one and be like, hey, you're gonna need to step up and help me um, with childcare because I need to get, get my adequate sleep to perform well in, in residency. So that's a, that's a discussion that you need to have with your you know partners uh, to make sure you guys are in the same team because it does take a team effort to make sure that you're staying healthy and you're staying uh, getting enough sleep. Um, that's number one, sleep. Uh, make sure you're getting at least minimum six hours of sleep. Um, or more six to eight hours. The other thing was try to figure out, you know, typically when we start rest, uh, when you start, uh, if you're on the wards or you're in the ICU, you're typically if you're starting at 6.30, every program is different. If you're in the ICU, typically start time is at 6 a.m. That's when you get uh, handoffs. So you show up really early and the residents overnight, they tell you about the patients that you're, that you're gonna be carrying. And you gotta make sure you show up early. You gotta make sure that you're not waking up 30 minutes before you have to be there and like rush out the door and barely make it because you're not going to be ready to understand what's going on. I would prepare at least an hour before you start to 
be have be ready already and just have an hour to yourself to if you want to work out do a little cardio do reading just to kind of have that right mindset before you go into work i didn't discover that till i was a second year and man it made such a huge difference i was less stressed out i was less anxious about things and i just had the bandwidth the mental bandwidth to be able to receive information uh, of course that's making sure that you have an hour after you already got your adequate numbers of hours of sleep, then you could wake up an hour early. If you're still struggling with sleeping um, and not being able to get adequate hours of sleep, then that's a different story. Then that's probably because you're going to sleep a little bit too late. Um, uh, thank you, Mackenzie, for the congrats. And that's like number one is don't be cheap on your sleep. Um, don't be cheap out. Don't cheap out on your mental health habits, uh, journaling, meditation. And we could have a different discussion. I meditate um, you know, every day, at least 10 minutes. And there's been studies, huge studies, uh, really uh, ba based on nurture, nature articles and everything on how meditation does help with long-term memory, um, retention, mood. There's a lot of benefits to it. Um, data on cold showers is not as strong, uh, even though people say you should do it. Data on making sure drinking coffee Two hours after you wake up actually is pretty good. Um, I wouldn't drink coffee right away. Uh, typically, it takes a couple hours. You have an increased spike in cortisol in the morning, and then it drops off a couple hours after you wake up, four hours after you wake up. So the best time to drink coffee is typically four hours after you wake up, actually. So take your coffee. Maybe while you're rounding, you can drink coffee. Um, that's like the best time. And we'll talk more about uh, mental health you know, habits, tips, uh, but those are the major ones that I would say. The other thing that I also advocate is some level of fitness. I wasn't very good about it. Um, I just started again. You know, it's so hard for us to maintain a healthy habit uh, because it's so much easier to just come home and, and just relax and not do anything. Small. You don't need to do anything. You got to maybe go for a walk, 10 minutes, do some type of cardio, do some type of lifting. I have a home gym, so I do some, I do power lifting and that helps a lot. I've been doing that and it's been such a nice stress reliever, especially with having a kid. Um, it's just my time. So dedicate at least some 30 minutes of your time, whatever it is. If you like video games, go for it. But I would also want to balance that with some lifting, some type of a physical activity. Um, so anyways, so let's just continue on. For the, inter the other important things I think that you guys also want to know is intern task management, navigating an efficient workflow. Um, so, as a, as a quick question for you guys, as when you guys were med students, what kind of workflow did you guys have? Or did you guys have any workflow um, for efficiency? And what are the things, what are, what are kind of typical workflows have you guys heard of that most residents have? You guys could type on the chat box or talk, whatever you guys want to do. The box system of or organization of tasks. Yeah, that's good. That's a good example, Drew. Um, so uh, let's see. So yeah, there's many different ways. Um, the way that I, I wish I honestly, next lecture, next lecture, I promise I'll have it so that you guys are able to see what I type. My plan was to have it so that you guys have like a white piece of paper, like white. You guys, I'm able to share my screen and it's white, and I'm able. I'm, I have a pen on me writing. My, I think my pen uh, battery is dead, so I can't do that today. Uh, but next lecture, I'll definitely be more prepared when it comes to that. I apologize. But yeah, the box system, uh, checklist. I think checklist is a great one. Um, um, so what I recommend is, you know, typically just so just to kind of break down on AGME uh, rec uh, cutoff uh, like patient load that the interns could carry. Uh, my understanding is that you can carry, um, you know, at least for when I was a resident, I was carrying uh, 10. Sometimes the load for a senior was 20 patients in the floor. Um, oh, what the heck? The, it says I'm running out of time. Oh, I didn't realize the Zoom had limited amount of time. Okay, I'll speed this up. I don't know why it only gave me 40 minutes, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't have a pro account on, on Zoom. So anyways, the the... The way that it worked is that you would you would have ten patients per um, per team as an intern, and then in the ICU you would have eight patients. So it's a lot of patients, and so when you're rounding, it's so easy for you to kind of get 
next up on the task that you need to do. So having a checklist is really crucial. And what um, what Mohammed was saying about a checklist is that when you have a, you have you have your sheet of paper, you have the patient's name, uh, one side here, and then at the end, you have essentially a checklist after, while you're rounding. So let's say your attending says, "Hey, I want you to call this consult." You have call console, and you put like a checkbox, so that or a check or a checkbox, so that you have you can check it off once you're done with that task. So that holds you accountable, and I think that's a really good, simple way of making sure you don't forget tasks. Um, the most important thing is that don't rely on your memory. Um, I think a lot of you guys probably don't do that, but at least I did. I try to like rely on my memory, and it doesn't work out. There's going to be multi a lot of things that you might not remember. And right now, as an intern, there's a lot of things you don't know. So just try to imagine trying to balance things that you're trying to learn a lot, you know, but at the same time, trying to remember things. It's not going to end well. So what you need to do is, number one, your goal in residency is to learn, especially as an intern, is to learn and be a sponge to try to learn everything that you can. Writing things down is going to make it so you are you're not have, you don't have to remember manual tasks, like things that are not important. So that's going to make it so that your brain doesn't have to work on remembering things. So that's the reason why I really like writing things down, checklist stuff. Um, and then the other system that I like is... Um, keeping it basic with labs um, in the beginning, you know, kind of, I know that it's hard to have people print out everything. And I think in the beginning, you might print out the whole uh, progress note of the patient and the vitals and everything. Try to, as you become an intern, you progress to be a senior, try to rely less on your paper. Yeah, of course, in the beginning, you might be reading the paper and almost, or beset, or almost like you're rec reciting something. Um, but it, as you progress through your training, I want you to just have to rely less on, less on the paper because that's how you're going to have to be as a fellow or as an attending. You're going to have a lot of patients. You're not going to be carrying a paper for each patient. It's going to be a paper for uh, all 20, and it's going to be just one little line uh, with labs on the, on the corner. But that comes with time. That comes with the more patients you see, they all have a certain pattern to them. And part of the course here is... Um, I'm going to try to show you these patterns that you'll see for congestive heart failure for ACS patients, patients in shock, patients uh, multi with, think of, I'm not saying that don't think of patients as problems, but kind of think of patients as problems in the beginning because it's going to help you be more organized. Um, and then, uh, sorry if it, give me one second. So it only says here that I only have six minutes. I don't know why. Um, it only it's only allowed me to fill, uh, record for 40 minutes. So I apologize if you guys get get kicked out. I'll try to I don't I don't know what I'll do, but I'll try to see if you guys can come back. It only says that I have six minutes left, so I'll try to speed it up. Um, the other thing is how do you communicate? Uh, so that's kind of with when it comes to efficient workflow is just kind of be patient with that. And and then the next one next lecture I'll be more specific and write things down for you guys so you guys could actually see what I mean by writing things down. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the pad, um, the pen to do that today. The other component, which is the things that I'll finish off, is understanding how do you communicate medical data presentations. Who here feels, um, yeah, without pro, some sessions are 40 minutes long. I didn't even know that. Okay, I'll try to get a pro account. Is pro account free or you have to pay? Um, thanks. Thanks, Mohammed. Uh, who here feels like the presentations are pretty good? Or who here, or who here thinks that they need to work on their presentations? How about that? That's probably a better question. Definitely need to work on presentations. Yeah. Yeah, everybody, I think, yeah, you, you guys are in good company. Could be better. Yeah, like Saeed, Mohammed, Drew, KG, thanks for responding and being, number one, I appreciate that you guys are responding. Uh, because it kind of shows a level of vulnerability I think that you need to have in residency is to re realize that we're not perfect. You know, you're um, you're coming in with these set of ideas that you're, oh, I'm supposed to know all these things. Trust me, as a, as a, inter as a resident, when I was evaluating interns, some of them presentations weren't that good. And they got better, you know, and mine weren't that good either. And they got better. It's just a process. Um, so, Let's just cut it, cut to the chase. This is definitely not exhaustive of a way to present, but basically the whole point of a presentation is to make sure that you're able to cons consolidate all the medical information in a way that has a flow to it, right? 
So yeah, I like to use the, the mnemonic SOAP, uh, subjective, objective, um, assessment and plan. Essentially is talk about, and that's pertinent for progress patients who have been in the hospital multiple times. Typically for HMP, that's a bit different and we'll talk about how that's different. But the way that I like to think about it is when I'm here, like when I'm hearing someone present, I wanna make sure they, when they're talking about an HMP, they obviously say they're coming, they have medical history that's pertinent. So what's the patient's med pertinent medical history? Don't list things that are irrelevant. Some, especially within trauma medicine, there's gonna be patients who have multiple comorbidities. They had a, a toe fracture, or whatever. It doesn't matter if it's if they're coming in for heart failure. Obviously, if it's hypertension, diabetes, all these comorbidities that could be related to why they're coming in, definitely mention it. And then I want you to, when you're talking about a assessment and plan, or sorry, HMP, the flow. How were their symptoms? Did it get the were they was it the same? Did it get worse? Did it get better? Did it get worse? Like tell me the flow. Don't confuse me. And if you're confused, I'm gonna be confused. So make sure that you're solid with how the history flows. And then you could eliminate, think of differential diagnosis. You know, if someone's coming with shortness of breath, are they having fevers? Are they having productive cough? Are they having orthopnea or are they having leg edema or did they go on recent travel? Are they, they have recent surgery? Do they have a history of cancer? Because that could be uh, concerning for pulmonary embolism if they're short, having shortness of breath. That's So think of what's every time that I'm saying, is that relevant to someone's differential diagnosis? For instance, yeah, of course, it's important that you mention tachycardia for someone with shortness of breath because tachycardia could be associated with pulmonary embolism, but it could also be associated with sepsis. Um, so. The, that's kind of the, the way that I want you to think is think of presenting data, not just to present data, but present data in a way that has logic to it. And it actually makes sense because you're thinking of eliminating differential diagnosis. And, and then at the end, I don't want when you're t saying data in the beginning, don't give me your opinion. Don't say, oh, it's, it's CBC is this because of that. That's assessment and plan. Just tell me white count or TBC was notable for this. So going back, so let's say you talk about HMP, you talk about the, how they presented to the ED. And then essentially you talk about the workup that they did in the ED, what they started them in on, as if it's uh, whatever med med management that they thought the patient had, um, problem they had. And then you say overnight events. Uh, typically you're presenting a patient who, you know, you didn't, or maybe you didn't, um, you didn't admit that patient, you're getting it a day afterwards. And so the attending has missed the day or uh, the overnight events. So you'll talk about how they presented the, how they did overnight and now how they're doing this morning. So now that's when you get to the soap note of subjective objective assessment plan. So you say, you know, no acute events overnight, or if there were events, you mentioned the event and what happened subjectively patient is doing this. How are they feeling? Literally just how are they doing? And then objective, you know, vitals were notable for this. Don't read off every vital. Maybe depending on the attending, every attending is different. So I would ask, you want me to tell you what's notable, what vitals were notable, or do you want me to just tell you a range? That's usually how I say it in the beginning. I'm going to be done. It's only going to cut off for a minute, guys. So I apologize. And then assessment and plan is something that I think we're going to work on next, next uh, session. I'm really sorry, guys, that this was super uh, short. Um, I'm limited by not having upgrade to pro, which I've been told I need to pay. So I'll pay for that next time. If you guys could message me on Reddit, tell me what you guys thought. Uh, or if you guys are still interested in the second session, I would, I'll, I would love to do another one for you guys. Uh, and if not, let me know why and how I can make it better. I know today was super last minute. So I do appreciate you coming in and, uh, and being and listening. Any last minute questions before Zoom kicks me out because I'm not, I don't have a pro account. Next, I think will be next uh, next week, Chloe. I think. Do you guys? Did this was this useful or not really? <laughs> similar time, yeah, I think similar time. I also wanted to make it short because it's Mother's Day, so I hope you guys don't mind that it's super short.